Rapo Radio, Mad for the Mad for the Pink. We are back, waiting on a guest to call in. But just in case of warning, because y'all motherfuckers know this happens from time to time. The guests either are no show or they'll call up. So in the next 30 minutes, if we don't hear from them, we're going to just have to reschedule it. You know what I mean? And you know what happens. So I usually don't get too upset. You know what I mean? But it happens. It happens. So I don't want to disappoint you guys out there listening and waiting also as well. But, you know, whenever time up we schedule, it always comes through. So, but hopefully they call in. I, I'm pretty sure they will. But just throwing that out there, man. Just throwing that out there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to talk about this shit real fast, man. Now that summer's here and, and, you know, the NBA Finals is wrapped up, I mean, we're still waiting for football. When it comes to sports, man, it ain't shit on that summertime, man. Yeah, I like baseball, but not to the point where I want to watch three hours plus of motherfuckers swinging the bat and throwing balls. Eh, I don't know. I don't know, man. That, that's one thing about the summertime when it, it gets boring, you know what I mean? So, y'all motherfuckers, man, I hope you got better shit to do than watching baseball. <laughs> you know what I said? Straight up and down. We're getting some switchboards to sound that light up. We got a 213 number. Let's get to the call, phone calls, folks. It's 213-358. You on Dapo Radio. Who is this? What's good with it, man? Your boy, Big Prodigy, South Central Quartel. Man. All right, here we go. Hey, what's poppin', man? Hey, I want to say thank you for making the time to come fuck with me on Dapo Radio. All good, bro. You know? All to the G. I mean, I'm sitting here, man. Shit, we had a show last night, dude. So, you know, some of the cats is is is, is still recuperating from that shit. But you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm all here. It's all though. love. It's all love. All good, man. It's all good. I also want to shout out your brother, man, Kelly Pitts. He's been on this show quite a bit. He's been a regular here. Shout out to your bro, man. Straight up and down. Yeah, I just tried to get at Kelly. He might come through, though. Kelly, my what's show up, up, that's what's up man. Now, now for, you know, because this is, this is actually the first time I got to interview you and, and have you on the show. Uh, we do have a, a younger uh, learning audience right now. They're pretty young, and I'm trying to school them. Can you just elaborate yourself and let these motherfuckers know who you are just so they can get an understanding? For sure. Yeah, man, my name Big Prodigy, man. I'm a part of a group, lead rapper, um, founder of a, a West Coast legendary group called the South Central Cartel. You know what I mean? We've been doing this West Coast gangster rap thing since 1991. You know what I mean? So we've been around a long time, man. And you can find out everything you need to know about us. All you got to do is hit the Google button. You feel me? And put South Central Cartel in there, man. The whole goddamn life story gonna show up. Right, right. But I'm the so, I'm the so guy I'm behind I'm the guy behind the um I'm the guy behind the you know some of them them gangster lyrics and I'm the producer as well of the group. That's a fact. And all your listeners, before this when this interview is done, I want you guys. To go, we'll do what he said. Google. I want you guys to go and buy. Go buy the music. Support the music. Follow them on all the social media sites and all that stuff. Whatever. I want you guys to do your homework after this interview. So don't forget, please, man. Support the real shit. Support OG veterans. Please, please that do that. Still killing the game with dope music today, man. So just support the real shit. So don't forget that. Um. Please believe it. Now. He, you think you get 1991? Cause look, uh, my my older cousins are the ones that got me involved in hip hop. Me being a Mexican cat, you know what I mean. And, and I come from the era where you know a bunch of the cholos and the cholas and shit. <laughs> and, and a lot of my <laughs> hip hop came from them. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. A lot of my hip hop came from them. Uh, South Central Manners. I remember they had it and they let me borrow it. And That's I was right. That was the original. That, a fucking album you know, playing South Central Man over and over and over. Because you understand, us Mexicans back in those days, we loved anything with that zap samples and all that shit. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, 
But yeah, if I listen to the whole album, I love that album, and I, I've been a fan of you guys since that since that time. Back, and I was only in middle school when that album came out. So thank you for Respect, giving man. me something dope to listen to when I was a youngin'. You know what I mean? I appreciate that shit. Man, thanks for listening to it. You dig? Shit, man. We had a nice show last yeah, man. night, man. Quite a few people came out, man. It was cool. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. I, I want to talk about it. You guys got a new album. To the West. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Like, who did the production? I know yourself, you're a producer. Anybody else uh, co-produced in there? Uh let us know a little bit about it because I want everybody to go and support this. Okay. Well, to the West is, first of all, that one, man, I produced that one. I did that whole joint. Um, no co-production, just me. Um, what the to the West really was supposed to be, man, is like a little buff, like a little warm-up, you know, just letting people know we still out here and we still can deliver that classic, you know what I mean, gangster shit. And um, we supposed to finish up another joint we got called Cartelifornia, man. That we gonna do, you know. Mm. That's gonna pro- that you know that that could be the the final one for the South Central Cartel because everybody is like moving on to other things, man. So I'm trying to get you know get get it together, man, and, and continue with this Cartelifornia, man, and it may and may not, I ain't going to guarantee it, but it's a possibility that that might be the one that's going to sell it. But we want to do a documentary and a, and, and, and everything and just call it Cartelifornia. Just, you know, explain the history of the SEC, explain some of the shit we've been through in the game. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people feel like we right. was cracking, cracking, cracking in the 90s, and then we fell off. Like like it meet like some in like magically we fell off like in right like ninety nine or so we just kind of took a right. dip off the side of the ledge you know what I mean but you know of course there's always some shit going on behind the scenes that 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 nobody else know about that goes on so you know we want to get down man and let people know what really went down and just you know everybody deserves to say their peace and I want all of the SEC members to be able to express themselves, man, and, and let, let whatever they want the world to know, I want them to be able to say it, man. So to the West is us, man, letting people know we still got it, man. You know, we can still drop that fire. You know what I mean? And yeah, just and let them know. still come. got that fire because I listened to the album, man. That shit is dope. Man, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. A lot of people like it, man. We're about to shoot a couple more videos off that EP. Shit, if we do it our way, we're going to have a video for every damn song, shit, on that joint. So we still pushing that, man. We're going to be pushing that probably through the summer. You know what I mean? That's We're going to ride that out through the summer. Man, Kylie Pitch dropped another little single called LOL. And that's yeah, that's something we're that me that and him do Yeah, yeah, that's something else that me and Callie Pitt, me and Young Pride, Callie Pitt. You know, if you know, you know that's the same person. But you know, we doing that together. We are gonna call that the Prodigy Project because you know that's just gonna be me and my brother riding out together, man, keeping it funky, keeping it, keeping trying to keep that nice classic vibe, man, and let people know. You know what I mean? We could do that shit all kind of ways. Hey man, and like I said, man, is this is one. I want this to be one of your homes. When anything you guys got popping off, singles, videos, I don't care if you're doing commercials for a goddamn McDonald's. <laughs> I don't care. You let us know, and we'll push that line for you, man. We we got here to support. Oh you shit! I got. Shit, we so. got the video. We got a video. I need to send you that. I didn't know you 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 had you play videos. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to do a lot of shit out here, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to just do more than just just radio, you know, and that's that's that's, well, that's, that's what's what's up. Saying. That's what's up right there. For we're sure, trying to do sure. what we're trying to do, but we we're here it's all about the support. Support, support. That's just the bottom line. Because I, mean, I do this shit for free. I don't I don't get a paid a nickel to do this show. I do this shit for free, but I do it because of the love of the music. Hell and, yeah, and man. All of the and you've been doing it for a while, man. So. Shit. I've been seeing you doing this for a good minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, yeah, but we hear the support. That's the thing. That's the thing. Um, and I man, to say, we go. I was going to tell you, we're going we to reset it up when I can get LV and Young Pride and all of us together for show, man. We're going to do that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And just today, oh, when we had that thing last night, I can't get a hold of nobody. <laughs> I can't catch up with that. Right. Hey, hey, so I, like, and then I know how that know. goes. I know how that goes. <laughs> hey, when you got you know, the rocking crowds and, and you got the doing the after parties and all that, hey. Exactly. Hey, the after parties, man. The <laughs> after parties, you know. <laughs> But um, I'm going to make that happen, no, I'm though, man. I'm good, man. I ain't going nowhere. We, we definitely will set that up. Um, okay, South Central Madness comes out, I think it's like early 92. Um, there you go. Then you guys get a deal with Def Jam. Um, right. but from what I understand, it, you guys were signed to Def Jam was, why why that imprint and not just being signed just to Def Jam? Um, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I know for people are talking, some people are confused about that situation. Okay, yeah, we was on RAL and all that, Rush Associated Labels. The reason it, it was that way with us was, one, was um, because when, when we got our deal, we got signed directly by Russell Simmons. Um, and I think that was like, maybe a smidgen before they started Def Jam West, maybe a smidgen before, a little bit before. And then um, when they, you know, when they started Def Jam West, we kind of were, we we definitely were doing business with Def Jam West, but for whatever reason, um, it didn't end up on the record. I really can't explain why, man. I just, I'm assuming it's because Russ signed us and he just, you know, put it through the RAL thing. You know what I mean? Uh, there's no reason why. Right. Honestly, we weren't Def Jam West. But, you know, I know Havoc was involved with a lot of the business, and um, maybe he, you know, he, he, he had something to do with that because he had the GWK thing. You know what I'm saying? So maybe yes, he just, yes. you know. Yes, have because what people don't understand, the two versions of that album that came out with, the CD is actually different, and it has one of them has the Def Jam imprint on Def Jam West imprint on it. Does and the it? other one does not? Yes, okay. I have one. You tell I have me the one where it doesn't have, have the Def it. Jam West imprint on it. Yeah, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do later down. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look for the let's get the pictures and send them to you. Yeah, that's some good. That's some see. That's some good game you just gave me because I didn't even know that. I, th- yes. I, I used to see that yes. R A L on everything for sure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I don't think there's so, no, no no particular reason though that it's not on there. I don't think it really meant nothing because yeah, we yeah, definitely I mean, was all the way up in Def Jam West all the time. Yeah, and that's one of the things that people when we would conversate would be like that's the confusion about the imprint. You know what I mean? And a lot of people mm-hmm. would go because this. I mean, one thing about uh, people from overseas, they buy a lot of the, they buy a lot of the music and they buy a lot of CDs and they're like heavy collectors. And these guys oh, buy like you know every, every version of that same album over and over because it's different. This, this is the thing that a lot of people don't versions, know. versions, remastered, all that. Yeah, this is one of the things that happened with In Gas We Trust that a lot of people don't know. When we put out in Gas We Trust, when we first, first put it out, Def Jam was distributed through Sony. And in the yes. midst of us yes. doing that record, they got bought by a different company. I think Polygram bought them. So that's Polygram. where the re-release came in. So it originally was released through Sony, and then they re-released it through Polygram, and that's probably yes, where the difference is. happened right there. Yeah. That's what. That's probably what it was. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I had to remember that. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, what happened with that album. Yeah, you know, that's what they're saying. Like, you saw the fans, and, and overseas, man, they love a lot of West Coast music. Overseas, like, it's like it's a big market for West Coast artists out there. They buy, they buy all that stuff. Man, so. you know, it's so much crazy. <laughs> that's one of the with conversations the, we had the, was about that imprint. I've seen so many re-releases, re-presses 
read everything of our music overseas, like Japan and whatnot, man, that is crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that shit coming or going. Who's doing it? If it's the major labels doing it? Is this somebody in between some funny motherfucker doing it? You know what I mean? Some pirate yeah. shit going on. It's hard to really gauge, man, what's real. These days it's difficult to, to keep up with all this shit because our albums – some of them old albums like South Central Madness and, and, and some of the original earlier Havoc and Prodigy records, they've been re-released, and I'm seeing them coming back out. I just seen South Central Madness re-released on Wax and, and CD recently. You know wow. what I mean? So it's, it's shit's crazy, dude. Yeah, somebody released vinyl, and what it is is these old companies – they sell your rights, your master rights to these new companies, and then the new companies take it and license it to people that want to manufacture 12 inches and CDs, these little novelty companies, because, you know, CDs and vinyl is, is like almost like novelty items at this point, like little, they little are. side things that people are doing now. It's not, but, of course, vinyl, the vinyl game is huge. There's still a lot of money there being made with the vinyl. Yeah. So, yeah, they remanufactured, man. I didn't have people, you know, show me that they didn't purchase the old records, man. Yeah, oh, that, that, that's that's <laughs> 100%, man, because, like, vinyl vinyl is pretty much up there. It's an it's, it's important part of hip-hop, uh, not just hip-hop, but a lot of people buy vinyl, whether it's country music, old rock exactly. music, that, that, all that shit, you know? So vinyl is, yeah, definitely, yeah, but it's crazy, you know what I mean? That and, and the people that do that, you guys get no percentage of that. Like you said, the novelty companies. Man, man you know the, the, what's so shit. fucked up about it? They we when we did them old deals, they they was ass deals, cheap, shitty ass deals. So the the percentages that we got was trash, right? You know what I mean? Like very small percentages. So these companies will go and buy the rights from those old companies that ain't really even doing business no more, but they own everybody's masters. You know what I mean? They'll go and buy the shit. And then when it, we'll, when they send, when we find out that they're selling our shit and we get at them, they want to pay us under the same scale that we did the original deal with. Motherfucker, we didn't sign no deal with you. Who is you? And how who how you going to uphold a deal we did with a whole nother company and try to pay us the crumbs that they were paying us in the 90s. See, that's that's the disconnect between these new companies that's buying all of these rights, and they want to come in and pay us crumbs. You know, they want to pay us the crumbs crazy, that man. we ain't really trying to – I ain't really – we didn't, yeah, we didn't turn down a couple of royalty checks because they so damn small, dude. You know, we feel like they owe us more money, so, you know. They think you over here starving, That's and they crazy. try to give you these crumbs, bro. But I we wow. we we didn't turn wow. those checks down because we might have to come back later on with a lawyer and say, "Hey, y'all owe us more money than that." Hey, hey, that's all you that's all you need right there, man. Get get a good lawyer, and then eventually you'll even have to fall, or they're gonna have to settle with a good deal or something. Because exactly, and wrong, man, these and, and it happens wow. to a lot of artists, and it's sad. Most deaf. Most now, deaf. Um, and now, Jackie Trust comes out, and you guys also dropped a, a second album on Def Jam, which was All Day Every Day. Was it? Or what was it? I'm high now. That's it. Think. Well, it's it's weird, man. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. See, I'm high as trust. fuck now. I smoke too much before I get <laughs> <I did. laughs> But you no, but you you you're technically <laughs> technically you're right. We drop in gas, we trust, and then in between we drop Murder Squad Nationwide. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, that, and that was that. I wanted to bring up the Murder Squad because that record right like there is one of the dopest ones out there. And it's very rare now. Motherfuckers are scrambling for that original yeah, copy. I don't think you can even. I don't think you can even find it on. It ain't even on iTunes. Like people telling me, it's not even on iTunes. So yeah, that that's very, very, very rare. Very rare. You know, yeah. you, you can buy them. Yeah, used that album is on, the shit. 
Yeah, you could buy them used on places like Amazon and whatnot, you know what I mean, or eBay, but you can't buy the record. Technically, you can't buy that record. Because, you uh, know, it don't really, they don't eBay make or, or Amazon, you're paying a hefty amount of money for it. You're really? paying a lot, definitely, <laughs> because, because you can't buy it no more. So yeah. it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. You know, so we did that album, which it was a, it wasn't necessarily an SCC album, but they put SCC on the cover and titled it SCC Presents. They did that, you know what I mean? So it became um, almost like our second record, but it wasn't. It was, kind of, you know, everybody know that was a compilation. That was a whole crew album. It wasn't the South Central Cartel album. And then we turned around and released All Day, Every Day after that joint, which by yeah, then, you know, we yeah. had been sitting on it. We almost felt like we felt like we had been basically shelved at that point because it was we put out our first album in 93 in Gas We Trust. And the, our official second album didn't come out till 97, 98 somewhere around up in there, it was a nice amount of years in between. But if you count the, the Murder Squad record, then you could say, you know, but that didn't work the way that albums worked as with the SEC as a group. You know what I mean? So we didn't feel like that was an SEC album per se, because it wasn't. It wasn't meant to be. So some people may right. think it is, but it wasn't, you know. But I do like that album, though. Right. It was dope. I like All Day Every Day, yeah, too. That shit was dope, and, too. And All Day Every Day, um, do you think that album suffered as far as, like, sales and population was because of the fact Hell yeah. that it was 1997 and we're coming off the murders of Biggie and Pac fresh off that. And that's when radio stations and, and motherfuckers were, you know, being leery of buying West Coast music at that time. Do you think it kind of <laughs> suffered from that? I don't. I think the reason that album didn't blow up because I think when we put out All Day Every Day, West Coast music was still kind of popping. Our music didn't start really feeling like it was dead until the early, early part of the 2000s. But, you know, like toward the uh. end of the 90s, it still was pretty much, it was doing okay still. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a dire yeah. straits yet. You know, the reason All Day Every Day didn't do what it should have done was because we wasn't on Def Jam no more. We got off of Def Jam, you know. We had went up in Def Jam and asked them, we, we was like, y'all got to let us roll because y'all not handling business. It was a lot of politics in Def Jam when it came to the South Central Cartel. It was just too much shit going on, and we wasn't getting the support that we felt like we deserved from Def Jam. You know what I mean? So yeah, we had a, a lot of artists with Lior and was like, yeah, we, we, we had a meeting with Lior and was like, man, we want to go ahead. Because Def Jam basically wasn't, they was like, you know, whatever with All Day Every Day. You feel me? We loved that fucking album. And we like, man, y'all, yeah. and, and the record was doing, the record was doing well. But it was certain situations within Def Jam, people in there that just wasn't either they wasn't filling the album or they just wasn't filling the group. You know, I don't, I could argue it could have been both. You know what I mean? But we were offered a new budget, the opportunity to do a new album, and we just turned it down. We was like, nah, we rather go. See, a lot of people think we got dropped. If you read that bullshit online, it say that we got dropped by Def Jam and we sunk into oblivion. That shit is all bullshit, man. We went up in Def Jam. We had a meeting with the people that was running it, and we was like, man, nah, we want to go ahead and bounce. We asked to be released, and they let us go. And that was that. And all day, every day just fell victim to the bullshit, the politics. You know what I'm saying? That happens in these record labels. Because if you listen to that album, right. damn well that album was going to blow the fuck up if they would have promoted it. If you ever yeah. listen to All Day Every Day, that album was dumb sick. You know what I mean? Well, that album, finish. That album has a lot of good fucking tracks on So great it, motherfucking exactly. songs. Exactly. It's just Def Jam wasn't trying to make it happen. They gave us two videos, All Day Every Day, and West Coast Gangsters. They gave us that. 
and and that was it, man. And we were supposed to do a video for Champagne Wishes because that was the only really majorly, majorly commercial song on there for us, they thought. And and but we never got the video for Champagne Wishes. When it was time to do the video, they they froze up the money on us. They was like, nah, nah, we ain't gonna do that. So you know what else right. we gonna do? We ain't finna sit here and keep dealing with this shit. All right, we gonna roll on out. And that was that. Right. That's pretty much in the nutshell what happened. Yeah, but you know, you you ain't the only West Coast uh, artist that was on Jeff Jam that had issues because you didn't even listen to Jail Felony and Richie you Yeah, uh, hey, name one on, that man. didn't have issues. Yeah, because even no. East Coast artists, Ghostface Killer had issues. Uh, like later on in the two thousands, a lot of Red Man was having issues. Uh, they was having a lot of issues with Def Jam as a whole. As, as years went by, as every time. Jeff, every year passed by, Jeff Jam keep getting bigger and bigger, and, and it just dwindled down. And every artist that was an artist, an original artist at that point, was having issues with that label. So, that's yeah, crazy. I mean, dude, you know, we're at a point, man, in this music business, man. SCC, us, man, as individuals, we the kind of cats right now. We like, man, you know what, man? We going, we we respect and appreciate our fans, the ones that really rock with us, man. As far as the music business as a whole goes, we feel like, and I get tired of hearing it. SEC is so underrated. This, that, and the third. It's whatever yeah. it is, man. You know what I mean? The fans appreciate us. I'm not looking for no industry validation because that shit ain't never coming. You feel me? So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, man, and the people that love that and get down with it, that's what it is. The record business, the music business as a whole, we ain't never really, you know what I mean, got that kind of appreciation from the music business. You know what I mean? Because to me, the music, the, the game is so full of fake motherfuckers. Motherfuckers is fake. You will, you will shake a motherfucking hand a day and the motherfucker be like, man, I want to work. We're going to do some work. And you know you never hear from him again, man. So I'm like, I'm a real nigga. I ain't finna be dealing with that shit. Right, right. No, that's that. It is, it is a shaky, uh, vicious, dirty, cutthroat business industry. Is like you said, full of snakes and liars and thieves and. Most y'all, definitely. Y'all listeners out the chubby rappers, be aware, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Man, these motherfuckers so fake, man. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Niggas is fake. Ninety percent of these motherfuckers, for real. Period. Yes. Now, also, okay, I want I want to talk about something. Um, Havoc and Prodigy. I'm a big Mob Deep fan as well. Right. What What did you guys first thought when you heard that these guys' names was Havoc and Prodigy? Because on their second or their third album, Hell on Earth, on the on the credits, they shout you guys out. They they literally shout you guys out on the credits. Um, have you because guys had any interactions with them before face to face on that? Yeah, man. Once again, I'm 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 gonna give you the quick story. And I might have told you this before in a previous interview. I'm gonna give you a quick one. Mm-hmm. First of all, the first time I ever heard of Havoc and Prodigy from Mob D was somebody had told me that they seen a group in in the Source magazine, unsigned hype or something, named Havoc and Prodigy or whatever it was, or, or they had the names Havoc and Prodigy. Now, once again, mind you, SCC already been out making records, doing show. We already cracking already. So when, I, when I'm when i alert. Yeah, you guys already established. It, yeah, we already doing our thing. So when I when I'm told this, I seen it, but I kind of just glazed over it because in a way I'm like, well, man, I'm already doing my thing. Who is these guys? So I didn't, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. Kind of, I just was like, whatever. You know what I mean? So fast forward a couple a year or two later, we're in Atlanta. At Jack the Rapper, when they used to have that Jack the Rapper convention. Yeah, Jack and the me Rapper. And Havoc, yeah, me and Havoc standing in the lobby, and they walk up on us. Five or six little little guys, little young guys, 
And, um, you know, one nigga step up and like Prodigy, I want to introduce you to Prodigy and Havoc. I want to introduce you to Havoc. Anyway, from that point, of course, whatever happened, happened. There wasn't no fight. They just was a little shit talking for a minute. And then Guru and Premier jumped in, and Premier took the Mob Deep crew. Gangstar took me and Havoc and walked us away. And that was the end of it, right? You know, so... Later that night, we end up in another suite in the hotel, both of us all together. It ended up being, ah, right, man, you niggas is Havoc and Prodigy in New York. We Havoc and Prodigy in L.A., whatever. Nothing happened. Nobody squabbled. Wasn't nothing happened happening. And I think if they shot it out, I didn't even see that. You gave me some new – that was some good game you just gave me because I didn't even know that. But that they had shot it us out yeah, on the record. Yeah, came like in Okay. So – Later on, we I mean we left Atlanta, homie, on some peace shit. No try, no drama, no no nothing. But then we started hearing after the SCC kind of you know, the whole Def Jam shit was over and we kinda of fell off the face of the earth a little bit. We wasn't doing nothing for a minute, no records. You know what I mean? I started hearing about niggas taking shots, man. But the Atlanta shit was cool. That's probably why they would shout us out on the record. You know what I mean? But it got a little ugly. It got a little later on when Prodigy went to jail and he got out and did interviews and started lying and saying that them niggas had us shook in Atlanta, this, that, and the third. Like, nigga put extras on the shit. Like, we were scared. <laughs> I mean, like, God damn, my nigga. Come on, bro. Fuck out of here. So, you know, but he rest he but he rest in peace, so we ain't gonna go there. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to the home. Yeah, of course, of course. You know? But you know, that shit was all bullshit, man. All all bullshit. That is crazy. That is crazy, man. <laughs> that is crazy. You know. Yeah, but rest in peace part of you, you know what I'm saying? Most you, you gotta respect our legends, period, and just keep the rock. Yeah, keep the you know, I mean, you know, all y'all new listeners yeah, that's just y'all wanna a, be rappers and shit, man. Don't bite, man. Don't bite other names, man. Do your homework, man. Do your homework. You know, you know <laughs> you what, have though? confusion like this shit. I, I tell you like I tell niggas. Hypothetically speaking, say Havoc and Prodigy was Havoc and Prodigy, right? First of all, what I like to say is our first album came out in 92. Before that album came out, we had a single cracking. You Get Clown and Gangsta Love came out in 91. Before the album, so you got so you give us another year, South Central Cartel. You can go back a year or two before that. I had a single out all by myself called The Prodigal Son, just me. My name was Prodigy before the South Central Cartel, and I was Prodigy before that single came out. What niggas need to understand is, dude, I didn't just wake up yesterday and see some nigga name and decide, you know what, oh, I'm going to call myself Prodigy too. And, oh, I see it. I can change the way I spell it. Oh, that name, dope. I'm going to change up the spelling and just become Prodigy and steal this nigga's name. Nah, man, I was Prodigy mm. years before the South Central Cartel. I was already doing this Prodigy shit. I had a song out all by myself as Prodigy. So niggas, niggas need to really do their research and, and make sure. Now, if Prodigy in New York was Prodigy already, all I tell niggas is this. I didn't know him, bro. I had never heard of him. You remember, if, if you old enough, I don't know how old you are, but if you old enough, you know that back in the 90s, you could be popping in New York and L.A. and never know who you are. We wouldn't know nothing about you. You could be popping in L.A. and not even right. being known in New York. And that's how this shit was. It wasn't no internet. We didn't have that shit. You know what I mean? Nowadays, when you blow up, you damn near blow up worldwide at one time. But now, but, but when we came out, it wasn't that way, man. You would be a local, you would be locally cracking before you even popped off nationwide. And a lot of the groups from the West Coast would go gold and platinum selling records just on the West Coast alone. With no East Coast support. Without much support really, on the radio you know, or videos. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? Russell Simmons, when Russell Simmons heard what Havoc approached, because we met Russell Simmons at that same Jack the Rapper. That's where we met Russell Simmons and we got our deal at the Jack the Rapper. when He, he didn't know who we were, though. 
Russell was like, well, I never heard of y'all. You know, he checked on sales and seen that he was selling a lot of records. You feel me? But he had right. never heard of us, man. So, you know, but he loved, he seen them numbers. And, you know, of course they was looking for them. Uh, they wanted to get into the West Coast, the gangster rap game. And we just happened to be the first group that they signed. Mm. On that note. Mm. Getting some game drops on y'all motherfuckers today. <laughs> Hell yeah. You dig. Hell yeah. Um, I got yeah. a phone call. We got a caller. We're going to take one caller in. 951 You're on the map for Shopping Radio with Prodigy of XCC. Who is this? You already know Mr. Global Coastal, a.k.a. Ball Sizzle, my nizzle. We so focused. What up, man? What's going on? Uh, what up, man? man? Big shout out to you, man, man, for, for your comeback, man. I see you. It, it, it's a pleasure to see you. I seen what you went through, how hard it was to get back to where you at. Salute to you, man. Big shout out. Prodigy, the real prodigy. You know what I'm saying? South Central <laughs> Court. Good with you, man. You know what I'm saying? I seen y'all rock that show out last night, man. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you. Salute. But just call the you name. Know, you got any questions you got for Prodigy? Excuse me? What's up? You got any questions you, you got for Prodigy? Oh, man, just, um. You got any questions I, for Prodigy? I, 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 noticed, I noticed that, uh, I noticed that, uh, what's the name wasn't there with you? Um, Ron is he still Ron? part of the cartel? Man, um, um. Rhyme son, I, Rhyme son basically retired, man. I mean, you know, I think he recently started getting back into doing music, man. But as far as the SCC goes, man, he kind of told us he kind of was good. So, you know, we keeping it moving. But, you know, I ain't got nothing bad to say about that nigga. He's my first cousin, so I ain't really got nothing bad to say about him. But he just decided that he wanted to do something different, man. You know, he started changing up just the way he was feeling, man, and acting and getting a little bit more. You know, he got married and all that, man. You know, sometimes you change, turn into a different person, man. No doubt. And no doubt. He, just, he, ain't, he just ain't feeling it. You feel me? No doubt, no doubt, man. Well, big yeah. big shout out to you, man. I love what y'all doing. I'm a day one supporter. Gonna continue to be one, and uh, I look forward to seeing that, all your future yeah. endeavors. Man, we appreciate you, man. No doubt. And keep and keep keep this die for man. Shit poppin'. Shut out, man. Keep this die for shit popping, man. You already know. You already know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, you sir. Know. Man, thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Shout out, shout, out, shout out to the homeboy, man. Boss Hizzle. Um, what I want to ask you Much you know, love to the homie because he's so Milo. focused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's so focused. I want to ask you What happened with Mello? <laughs> what happened with Mello? Yeah, because I, mean, I remember man. that album came out for a short stint. And it, it, it just... Man, Mello went yeah, through the that same shit. Yeah, that one song, Red Man blazed it up. What happened? Yeah, he went through the same shit we went through. You know, record, you know, they wasn't agreeing with, you know, with whatever Melo then was doing. And, you know, they didn't really get, he didn't get the push behind his music like he should get. I mean, he ain't bashing Def Jam. I'm kind of over the shit. You know what I mean? After this, At this point in my life, I'm kind of over it. I'm just telling people the fucking facts. You feel me? You know, even with yeah. Mello, it was it was just issues, man, creative differences or whatever. Maybe they wanted him to do a different kind of music or more commercial type stuff or whatever it was. Mello did a lot of dope stuff, and I think maybe Def Jam yeah, didn't feel like it was dope in album, the direction, man. man. Yeah, man. So, I, 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 you know, like this happens, man. It's business, you know. Sometimes the record label don't. Um, have the same um, vision that you have, and and it bothers, it messes up your 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 moves. You feel me? Like you trying to do a thing, mm -hmm. and they seeing it a different way. You seeing it your way, they seeing it their way. And sometimes they just don't get behind it the way that you want them to get behind it. And it's just you know this this business. Right? That's why they call it the music business. You know, it's just like that. Sometimes yeah, it's right. ugly. Yeah, man. Melo's still around, though. You know, Melo's doing what he's doing, you know? Yeah, exactly.
to mellow, yeah, man. Still, I love that. I love that. I love that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, well, I, I think, hit him up a few years ago. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 I hit Melo up a few years ago. I say, man, you ready to get back in the studio? He said, yeah. And then I ain't heard nothing else from him. <laughs> That's my homie. <laughs> hey, man, it happens. It means like that sometimes, though, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doing good That's in it. life, man. So he doing good in this That's music, great. so he don't necessarily, you know, need to be doing no music. He he He's solid. I mean, that's a beautiful thing to hear, man. It's, that's great stuff. And, you know, and, and have well, I want to say thank you, man, for making the time. Hey, that's all that's important, man, is to stay solid, man. Keep keep doing good stuff, man. I mean, Period. The positive vibes to everybody, even if it's outside of music, man. Get yours, man. Get yours. You dig. Period. Well, I want to say thank you, man, for making the time, you know, buckle with me on the show. Uh, definitely, we're definitely going to have to schedule something with everybody calling in. That'd be great. Um, is there anything you want to add to let the listeners know? Anything you want to add that we didn't get to? Man, like the homie said, man, we got a new EP out. It's called To the West, South Central Cartel. We got a new video on YouTube. That's called um, Stay in Your Lane, South Central Cartel. Google it, man. Stream it, man. You know what I mean? Support that real Shields knit. You dig? Oh, definitely. Um, can you can you give everybody your social media tags and all that? That way they can start following right away. And all you're looking yeah. do it right away, man. Stop fucking around. Well, I mean, you know, they need to know. Obviously, anything South Central Cartel slash is us. So that's going to be... um. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Oh, on Instagram, it's the, it's the official South Central Cartel. And then, um, you know, Mr. Prodigy, um, Prodigy Hood on Facebook, Mr. Hood Good on Twitter, and Prodigy Hood on Prodigy. Anything Prodigy, P-R-O-D-E-J-E. You know what I mean? That's going to be me. Ain't no other P-R-O-D-E-J-E's. Nigga spelling it all kind of ways, but not my way. Yeah, don't, don't be biting shit, motherfuckers. You did. You don't need no more of those, Robbins. Shit. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So all y'all listeners, man, go and, go and log in and, and follow my dudes, man, and support man, that. Do that man, do that, man. Do that. You like that West Coast shit? This is it, man. This is it, man. This is, this is one of the, 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 the kings of the shit. So y'all get it you right. Did. Man. Y'all get it right. <laughs> y'all uh, make sure you can I get a dashboard radio board. drop from you? Cause I need one. Man, hey, hey, I'm a, you. I'm already ahead of you. I'm about to drop that for you. <laughs> Yo, this your boy Big. This your boy Big Prodigy from the mighty South Central Cartel, and you gotta support my homeboy Four in the Mad Four Report, bitch. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, man. Um, I got, this is your number right here. I got it right. The two one three. That's your number, right? Uh, cause I got, I, like that's I said, it. anything. I'm gonna text you my number. So for anything, a, a, anything, if you need to do another show, if you out of nowhere, we could just do that show that same day. If you got to get something off the chest or you just want a rebuttal, I'm here for you, man. This man. is your home. I want this to be one of your homes. I got you, man. I got you. We appreciate you too, homie. And um, yeah, we gonna definitely. When I get LV and Cali Pitts in here at the same time, I'm going to just call your line, man. Man, let's make it happen. That's what's up, man. I appreciate For that sure. shit, man. Well, oh, shit. Well, bro, I want you to enjoy your Saturday because it's beautiful outside, you know what I'm saying? Um, enjoy your Saturday. Uh, stay blessed, brother, and, uh, you know, just keep blessing us with with your heat, man. Cause hey, love man, I'm shit. feeling good. I heard the Lakers just got Anthony Davis, homie. I'm feeling pretty damn good right now. You know, I'm feeling real good. Yeah, shout out to Ty Davis. <laughs> you dig, you dig. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. All right, bro. Man, okay, you know, so we're going to the Do you, you want to introduce it? No, oh, man, yeah, yeah. Thank you all. Hell, yeah. This your boy, Big Prodigy from the SEC. And this our new joint to the West. Bang that shit out. All right, buddy. You have a good one, man. We keep in touch. All right, G.